What's up, guys? Uh, the gate was $4.3 million arena, arena record. The attendance was 18,321. Obviously, you know it's our 23rd consecutive sellout. Fight of the night, no shocker. Costa versus Rockhold. Um, and um, the performance of the night went to Edwards and Altamadano. Uh, they all won $50,000. Dane, I'm sure you're probably still buzzing like we are right now about that incredible finish. I mean, just talk us through what uh, what you thought of that fight. Yeah, I thought that uh, I thought that Usman fought the perfect fight, and uh, it was crazy because I was listening to the commentary, and Rogan and Anik and and uh, and DC were dead on with everything that they were saying on on what uh, Edwards needed to do and what he should be doing. And as soon as they were saying it, literally lands the head kick, and uh, yeah. It's kind of hard to contextualize like the, the entire history of the UFC in one moment, but is that one of the most shocking finishes to a title fight that you ever remember? Yeah, I mean, you think of everything that was on the line for Usman tonight, and you know, and Usman fought with absolute and total confidence all night. He fought the perfect fight. You know, it might not be the most fan friendly, you know, uh, style, but he was landing big shots to the body, big shots to the head, elbows. Um, you know, couldn't have fought a more perfect fight till the last minute. It's crazy, right? Anderson Silva's record stays secure. I mean, does it, what does that say to you? Like, you know, how difficult it is to win 16 fights in a row in the UFC? Well, it's how crazy the sport is. I, I was talking. It's what makes this sport the greatest sport in the world, you know, that you can sit through uh, five, uh, four rounds and, and, and four minutes, and that can happen in a fight. Anything is possible in this, in this sport. And... Um, you know, every time we make a fight and they're like, oh, this is a lopsided, one-sided, there are no lopsided, one-sided fights in this sport. Anything is possible. And uh, I, I said this week, talking to you guys, the problem with this fight was people won't give Leon enough credit, and he's a very dangerous opponent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, they you, took, you took kind of an unprecedented step this week and said, hey, if, if Leon wins, we probably got to do a rematch. Do you still believe? Yeah, that's the yeah. Case I do? mean, yeah. How do you not do? Fuck, Wembley. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I was gonna ask. You want to do it in England? I mean, ideally, would you want to do it in England? Yeah. Awesome. All right. I do want to ask you about the co event with Luke Rockhold, and it seems like he's done. Um, you know, kind of a controversial week with him and the things he had to say about the company. I'm just kind of curious what your thoughts are now. Yeah, I think that coming into a situation like both of theirs. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of stress. Um, and listen, you know me. Who's more freedom of speech than me? You know, he's entitled to his own opinions and his own, you know, whatever it is he that went on this week. But let me tell you what. I'll, I'll never say anything about him. I totally respect him. And after that war tonight... Normal humans like us that are sitting in this room have no idea what those two went through tonight in that octagon, and we never will, thank fucking God, okay? And uh, for both of them to dig as deep th as they did and put on an absolute dogfight like they did, I have nothing but respect for both of them. Are they both a little nutty? Absolutely. Um, but, hey, nothing but respect. The last question I had, I did want to ask you about Marab Duvall's really as well. Um, not necessarily the most exciting fight of the night, but certainly a big win over Jose Aldo. Just what did you think of his performance? And, you know, do you view him up there now in those top few guys in the Bantamweight division? Yeah, I mean, listen, he, I think that, first of all, I think that I love Jose. I don't want to shit on Jose, but Jose had zero offense tonight. Um, and and Marab didn't go after it like, you know, a guy that looks like he wants to fight for the title. And, you know, when asked the question about, his friend holding the title, and what did he want to do? He never really answered the question. So, you know, I, I think that Marab had, you know, I always say this, we're the bells and whistles guys. We, we, we lay it out there for him. We give you the opportunity to shine, and it, it, it's, it's up to you to get out there and do it. That didn't happen tonight. Dana, here, Jesus Rodriguez from Univision. I saw a couple of guys like being tired, like opening their mouths and everything. Do you think the altitude of Salt Lake City was a factor in that too? I think that, uh, you know, anywhere you go, no matter where you fight, fight in Abu Dhabi, 
the, the weather is a factor. You fight here, the altitude's a factor. You fight in Vegas, Vegas is a factor. You fight in, uh, you know, Denver. The, everywhere you go, there are factors to the fight. What are your impressions in Salt Lake City receiving the UFC 278? What's the question? What are your impressions of Salt Lake City? And having I mean, the crowd was incredible tonight. I mean, you could put this crowd up there with anybody tonight. That These guys were fired up. They were into it. The arena was like 60% full for the first fight of the night. I mean, this is as, as good as it gets. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, I don't know if you heard yesterday, but Paula Costa said USADA came and blood tested him. I apologize to him up on, on stage. That'll never happen again to any fighter. Is that something that you guys can control, or is that a USADA thing? What, who, how does that happen? Because it seems quite dangerous for a guy. Yeah, it's just, you, you, listen, again, how to explain They They don't know about fighting the way that people who know about fighting know about fighting. You don't go in and test a guy at 6 in the morning when he's cutting weight, and, and it's just... The result's going to be the same a few hours later. You wait. And, uh, yeah, I apologize to him uh, on stage when, when he came out, and that won't happen to another fighter again. Do you, are you guys in talks with him about maybe renegotiating, getting a new contract with him, or what's your relationship with Paulo at the moment? I told you two minutes ago, nothing but respect. Nothing but respect for both of those guys tonight. And, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, of course we'd like to resign him. We'll see what happens. Dana, just one for you here. Um, I know you said you were working on next month's pay-per-view, getting some fights on there. Uh, Tony Ferguson yes. tweeted out. It's Tony Ferguson fighting? Yes. Who's he fighting? Oh, he didn't say who he's fighting? No. All right. We'll Come let on. you know soon. You gave <laughs> ah, it's done. Uh, it's it's, it's, uh, it's Liege. Liege yeah. Ying Liang yeah. at 170? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Dana, um, when you said that that won't happen again, the Paula Costa getting you know, tested right before official weigh-ins. Have you already had that conversation with USADA? I didn't, but yeah. Yeah, we have. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Dana. Yeah. Yep. Amir Albazi got the victory. He wants to fight in Abu Dhabi. Would you consider that the Tuesday matchmaking? Who does? Amir Albazi. Um, I, I don't know about Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi's pretty stacked, you know. Um, probably need something bad to happen in Abu Dhabi to, to make that fight, but uh, that card's... That card's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, uh, Brandon Moreno was back here as a guest fighter, and he said he wants to fight Davidson Figueredo in Rio in January. Is that? I, I don't know, man. I, you know, you guys are throwing all this shit at me, and I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Dana, you said a few months back that Salt Lake is a destination. Yeah. With the result and the turnout tonight, how soon till you come back to Vivint Arena? Probably next year. Like 2023? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yep. Good? Yeah. All right. Dana, right here. Yeah. Um, you said that, that well, all the uncertainty between Marab and Aljo, does that leave the door open for maybe a Cheeto to get in there for a title shot? What's the question? With the uncertainty between Marab. You know, he, he didn't answer the question whether or not he would actually yeah, fight I, I Aljo. Just, I just think that Marab tonight, I, I didn't see a lot of offense out of Jose Aldo. I, I, I think that, you know, when, when, you're, when you're on a card like this, the place is packed like this, and you want to make a statement in that division – you go for it. And listen, I get it. He's fighting Jose Aldo and whatever it might be. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think Marab did himself a lot of favors tonight. Would that leave the door open for maybe Chito Vera? I have no idea. Thank you. Yep. Dana, I was just wondering, uh, the uh, Gronks, the uh, Gronk telecast, the, uh, what they did was pretty interesting. I know that uh, it's, it's probably more a Vegas question than anything else, but what you revealed with, with Derek Carr and Gronk wanting to play for the, uh, for the Raiders, at least it was close. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? I didn't want to talk about that, no, but uh, he, he sort of sucked me into it on live TV. Um, yeah, it's true. And, and, you know, I talked Brady into playing for the Raiders, and uh, Gronk was coming with him, and they were negotiating the deal, and they were really close to getting it done, and then Gruden pulled the deal, and Brady was not happy about it. Neither was I, and... Um, yeah, and that's that. He went to the Buccaneers and won the Super Bowl. I don't want to fucking box there. I wanted Brady at the, at, you know what I mean? <laughs> Crazy. But, yeah, it's true, and I thought that I would never tell that story publicly, but uh, what the hell Gronk was doing tonight that he, that he brought that up. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Look, 
could have been, I guess. Huh? Yeah. It, w it would have been amazing for the city and would have been amazing for the Raiders. I mean, their, f their first year there, they got Brady and Gronk, you know? So, yeah. I'm sure Mark Davis is real happy to hear this story. Dana, right over here. Yep. Six years ago, you were here for a fight night, and it you kind of talked about that it was on a specific day, and so it was kind of tough to get a big crowd out here. Tonight, you sell out a pay-per-view event. You have a, a huge opportunity with, with Leon uh, capitalizing on this big fight. And so I'm just curious, what is it like seeing the world of mixed martial arts or the sport of mixed martial arts grow at such a high pace over the last six years? Yeah, no, it's been incredible. I mean, just over the last uh, two years, it, it's been incredible. So, um, but But... Tonight is is a testament to that. I mean, you you look at Rockhold and 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 um, and Paulo Costa tonight. They're both acting crazy all week. You know, you don't know what to expect when they come out. But anybody who knows anything about the sport knows that if they come come out and do what they are capable of doing, you're going to get a fight like we got tonight. We end up getting that. And then, you know. Um, we're probably in a situation there was a minute left of the fight. You probably had people getting up and walking out because it looked like, you know, this was going to be a shutout for, for, for uh, Usman and boom, a head kick. It's just, it's what makes this sport so great, so exciting, and why it's so fun. You, you can never take it for granted and think that something's over until it's actually over. Um, and, and when you get that moment that I call the holy shit moment, which was the head kick, and you have everybody in the arena at the same time, everybody who's home watching TV at the same time, everybody in bars at the same time just explode. It's, it's, it's pretty special, man. It's, it's, the sport is pretty special. Yeah. Hi, Dana. Uh, UFC has a new TV as partner in Brazil for 2023. It's Bundy. Uh, would you mind to let me know a little bit more how, how happy and excited you are, UFC is, <coughs> with the new deal, the new partner in Brazil? Yeah, you know, we've been wanting to bring Fight Pass to, to Brazil for a long time. It's finally going to happen and obviously get back to Brazil. Uh, we haven't been there in a long time either. And I know there's been a lot of smack talking about me. I will be in Brazil for this fight. Um, so we're excited. I don't know what else to say other than that. <laughs> finally, and we're excited. We're coming back. Fight pass, and uh, I'm coming back to Brazil, too. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. How, was, how would you resume? How, how important was Global for during the last 10 years in Brazil? With you? It's been incredible. Our relationship with Global was and still is awesome. Um, those guys have been very good to us, and uh, they, they definitely helped us grow the brand in Brazil. Perfect. Last question, please. Uh, and we're not done with Globo either. We'll, we'll, we'll continue to do work with Globo. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, last question, please. Uh, for the near future, how important are Paulo Costa and Jose Aldo for the UFC plans with Brazilian market? How important are Costa and Aldo for the future in the Brazilian market? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, Costa had a great fight tonight. I mean, Jose Aldo is a, a legend, a living legend of the sport. Um, one of the greatest superstars to ever come out of Brazil. Um, and, uh, and he's very important to this company and to the sport. Hey, Dana. Also from Brazil here, we, uh, any, any news about uh, the, the possible uh, rematch about, with uh, Glover and uh, Jimmy Prochaska? Not off the top of my head, no. But obviously a fight we want, a fight they want, so... I'm sure the a fight the fans want, too, so we'll get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, you said uh, in Vegas, fighters have to deal with Vegas. Yeah. Is there any uh, hesitance in uh, bringing John Jones back to Vegas? <laughs> 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 that's, that's funny. Um, yeah, there's, there's a little. <laughs> yeah, there's a little. Probably bring him to New York. <laughs> yeah. Dana, with that Woodson fight, when it was to your right, yep. when it was such a bad foul and then they restarted, do you think that could have, the Woodson, Saldana could have maybe just been a no contest because you got a fighter almost knocked out and then he continues fighting with that foul? I thought that fight should have been stopped. But on the flip side, um, 
You don't showboat, man. You finish the fight. Lesson learned for that kid. That should have been a spectacular win for him. He should be up for a $50,000 bonus tonight, but, you know, he's not. Thank you. Great night tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Just one more here. Okay. Um, on Edwards versus Usman 3, um, is this one of those fights that you feel is big enough? Are you going to advise Leon to wait as long as it takes? Obviously, that was a bad knockout for Camaro. He's probably going to need to take a little time. Um, I know Leon's saying because of all the time off, he wants to be more active. Um, do you think it's a good idea that he sits and waits for that fight? Well, I don't think he'd have to sit and wait anyway due to the knockout. He wouldn't have to wait that long. You'd have to go back into camp and start training again anyway. First of all, we'd have to have the date. We're booked up all the way to, you know, um, I think we're booked up into January now. So, um, yeah, there'll be no waiting for him, so you think it even if it's a rematch. Usually go to England in March. Do you think that's probably a- We can go to England whenever the hell we want to now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could go to England before. We were selling out England before. Now you just start looking at, you know, do you do a bigger arena? Do you go? And I'm scared to go outside and – I'm definitely scared to go outside in England, so I'm joking about – I'm serious but joking about Wembley. But, um, yeah, I mean, anything is possible in England now. Well, I tweeted out that comment. People seem very excited about the idea of Wembley, so maybe – Yeah, it no, it would be fun, um, but yet yeah, scary at the same time. Sure. The weather isn't the greatest over there in England. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Speaking about Brazil, uh, what do you think it will be – Next in line for Amanda Nunes, it'll be Juliana Pena number three or Valentina Chechenko. What do you think about? That? I have no idea yet. I haven't talked to, to to any of them yet about any of that. Um, I I don't know. I don't know what she wants to do. Is she okay? She's great. Yeah. Yeah, because she's, she's very she was, okay. She, she was in a wheelchair and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they were in a they were in a war. It was a tough fight. So um, it happens. I'm sure you're going to see, I'm sure you're going to see Edwards limping in here tonight too. You know what I mean? Obviously, uh, they transported Usman, but you know, five round wars, man. Yeah, you don't, you don't come skipping in this place. It's, 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 it's tough on these guys. Beside Brazil, are you thinking in whole in UFC throughout Latin America, like Argentina, Venezuela, Colombia, Mexico? Well, yeah, yeah. Are, 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 uh, do I want to go to those places? Yeah, and, and actually made the event happen in those countries. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're going to go everywhere. Um, you know, the world isn't exactly uh, where it was five years ago. You know what I mean? When, when the world starts being like it was the pre-pandemic, I'll take this thing everywhere and anywhere. But like I say, literally every time I talk, I'm not going anywhere that's tough to do business you know hey what's up I understand, man. Great fight. Good night, you guys. You're not going to tell us who that was, Dana? No?